this happened to me in Iraq, ambush initiated by an RPG, you would not be standing in the middle of the street shooting back. Hi, I'm John Spencer. I'm the chair of urban warfare studies at the Modern War Institute. I spent over 25 years in the US Army, but I've been studying urban warfare for over a decade. Today, we're going to be looking at urban warfare in movies and TV and judge how real they are. It's very accurate to be behind a wall when you pop out for a second to throw a grenade like that. Where you're throwing the grenade is a, a little off. Grenades have a timer in them, basically, so they don't blow up in your hand. Once it hits the target, it's not throw, explode. A hundred percent air support is that vulnerable in urban operations and why usually you don't bring it in. It's low flying, it's slow, it doesn't have much protection and usually you drop soldiers offset of the urban battle. In this situation, they didn't expect that level of resistance. Crossing the street can actually be one of the most vulnerable things of urban warfare because there's so many angles, so many windows, so many doorways which you can get shot. So we teach things like throwing smoke out to, so that people can't see you and going one at a time and mixing up the speed at which you're going. If I didn't know this battle, the Battle of Mogadishu, I would say that this is not realistic where you have hundreds of people shooting it at a small unit, but that's really what happened. And they got the soldiers pretty accurate, but there's been a lot of criticism about this movie and the depiction of the Somalis and kind of the context of what, what's going on in Mogadishu at this time. Hey, Stay away from the walls. That's actually an iconic scene when he says stay off the walls. That was a real advice because once the bullets are hitting the walls, then they travel down the wall kind of like a bowling alley. And it can hit if you're standing on that. I wouldn't say it happens in all because every city is different. You know, mud, cement, glass, metal is a little different, but that's real. Let's go, Maddox. C2, convoy. You see the bullet holes in the glass because back then we, we weren't as prepared for urban warfare as we are today, so those aren't bulletproof vehicles. A lot of the weapons there aren't really ready for that environment that they're moving into, but they also were surprised by what they encountered. So I'd give it a, like a nine from realism in urban warfare, not realism in the portrayal of the population and things that are going on. Chris Hemsworth uh, is more like Jason Bourne there with his hand-to-hand. -hand. Close quarters fighting is very common in urban warfare. We actually tie the weapons to ourselves, so if we are get caught in that situation and turn a corner, somebody grabs our weapon, they can't take it away from us, but not the tactics that you're seeing in that scene. Because he's surrounded by people with bigger guns. Um, so he's trying to disarm one while another one's there. Personally, I would have tried to disarm one of them with one of those rifles and then get your back against something so you're not expecting a bad guy 360 degrees and then incapacitate them in some way. I can't say I found myself in a similar situation or we teach that, but it could work. Absolutely, slow the person down, buy yourself some time. I'd say you'd wanna turn corners as much as possible, and especially in a building like that, just to confuse them on which way you went. Out of everything out of that scene, that's probably the most realistic. The fact that he's hiding behind a column. That column is a supporting column, so it has steel reinforced concrete where some walls are, you can be paper thin, it can be plaster. If you don't have that, then you do get behind things like furniture and other things, anything you can to try to get you cover. Yeah, I, it was a lot of fun to watch, but I'd give it about a one to a two in realism. I actually love this clip and I wish I could so show it to more soldiers to think about buildings differently. Especially if you're defending a house, you wanna take the stairways away, you wanna take the doors away and absolutely throw furniture down. But the scene is really great too because it shows you that that's not necessarily what you stay behind to protect you from bullets because bullets pass through wood, through cloth and everything. That's a great lesson that clip teaches you that we teach our soldiers is to stay away from windows. You crouch down to go underneath them, you kind of slowly walk your way around them, bullets incoming 
probably wouldn't be that dramatic, uh, but like that, absolutely we tell you to stay away from windows. Yeah, that clip is, is really important to what people don't even think about even in the military called mouse holing, putting holes in walls and floors to move throughout the, without being seen is very common in major urban battles. Actually, I, I would love for soldiers to carry an ax or something like that, but there are other ways to do it. Uh, sometimes we use explosives, uh, sledgehammers, axes, like that to make that whole real tactics, real everything. So I'm going with a nine on that actually. I mean, this scene seems very familiar to me because I had my own deployments to Iraq and to Baghdad where we're doing raids like these, where there's only a few terrorists and a population of millions. For the advantage of your equipment, you can see at night, but also to reduce the risk of being observed and the risk to civilians. The fact that their, their night vision goggles are always on top of their head is not realistic. You'd want to cut the power or eliminate the light sources, so you want to use those goggles to your advantage. It's very common and very smart to have a sniper with overwatch who has angles that the people moving into the house can't see. It's a really good call for the sniper to be the one to execute the first shot because you want to save your surprise to the last moment and a sniper usually has a silenced weapon. This sniper in particular, he'd probably be wearing more, more equipment and usually it's a sniper and a spotter. So there'd be other people with him. The way they enter this house is a very common, almost too common thing that's portrayed in movies. It's called enter and clear a room. Throwing a grenade can be the preferred tactic if it's known to be an enemy uh, location and you know there's somebody in with a weapon, of course you're gonna enter it with something other than your face. So the way they're stacked on the door is about getting in there quickly. It actually evolved from SWAT tactics. These tactics were actually developed to limit that amount of violence because there may be civilians intermixed in there. So the tactics you see Bradley Cooper employing there is what I would teach. You want to get behind something that's going to stop the bullets that people are shooting at you, but also be able to return fire. We call that cover. The windows are great uh, to get down behind, kneel behind, still shoot from. Unlike the enemy in that scene running out into the open areas, that's actually the opposite of what actually happens. They're gonna stay inside the rooms, make you come in there. You wanna get off the streets and the alleys. Bushers on the move. Pete Bushers on the move, I'm in pursuit. When he goes off by himself and chases, that's not realistic. We don't move by ourselves anywhere. It's almost like a cardinal rule. So it'd be another team person right there with them and communicating to each other using some type of uh, radio or something. If he says moving and then somebody else would follow him out there. I'd give it a rating of around an eight. Ambush! This happened to me in, in Iraq. Ambush initiated by an RPG. Ambushes are very, very common in urban warfare. It's meant to surprise the people and trap them in a, a funnel like that. So although the bad guys don't usually just stand on top of the roof. You would not be standing in the middle of the street shooting back. You wouldn't last long. We'd seek cover, use those armored vehicles, which is great. Ideally though, in the whole situation, it's called a kill zone of the ambush. You wanna get out of it. That concept of having a, we call it a quick reaction force a backup team because you've been surprised somebody needs to come to help you. And we usually keep forces in their uniform ready to go in an urban setting like this to be that quick reaction force to come to that aid. They ram the vehicle, which is very common, trying to lock them in that kill zone so everybody can shoot at you. So I'm actually gonna give it a higher rating than I want to because the ambush is so uh, real outside of the tactics. So I'll give it a, Let's give it a four. The drones are probably the most ubiquitous change to urban warfare that's happened in decades. As I go into Ukraine to research urban warfare right now and the major battles, 
There's thousands and thousands of drones being used. It reduces some of the challenges of urban warfare. If I can put a drone in front of the soldier to see around that corner, to see over that building. The aspect of x-ray vision, we're not there yet because we still can't see through concrete, especially not much can see through steel. It gave me a lot of feelings of, of, of real stuff that's happened, especially the use of the dump truck. It reminds me of the Beirut bombings where a dump truck was brought to the front of the base, like in that scenario, but then exploded. This is why urban warfare is so hard. You know, a dump truck could be a threat. Although that's probably unlikely that you're gonna use your vibranium shield to throw it up in the air, but what it signifies for me is that what we call a three block war, where when you're fighting in urban terrain, you are actually very concerned about the civilian population and protecting people at the same time as you're fighting. And there's restrictions on what you can or can't do. So no, that's a very plausible scenario that any soldier who has, a, has values is trying to protect the civilian population while still trying to do it, the mission. So if the rating has to be for realism, I'll give it around a six. Eight to 10 tangos, front gate. Left, by the street. There's a couple of little things in there that are nice touches of adding realism to the situation, like the red dot that you see on your scopes on the modern weapons that will kind of help you aim to the green hue that you see on their eyeballs that are coming off the night vision goggles. So when you see some version of night vision goggles, you kind of Martian type of look when you look around, everybody's got green eyes. Get to the top of this building. Let's go. Blocked by buildings. We got no vantage point. This roost is a bust. In this scene, they enter a really strong building like that. It's a great, a great idea. The strategy was called strong points, or a building that is really strong. It has lines of sight or, or directions you can fire from in multiple directions. And in war, it's happened where a single building has been held for months just because of the, it was the right strong point. He says it's a bust because depending on what type, the direction of the building and where the enemy is, they got up there, thought they'd have a good vantage point, but they couldn't see anything, so it was a bust. on your right. What we usually see in urban warfare movies is everybody trying to get to the roof because it, it kind of is common sense that I can shoot down, I can see people farther out, but depending on the context, you don't want to be anywhere near the roof because you can also be seen from the air, from drones, from mortars, you can be hit. It's based on a real situation that happened in 2012 uh, Benghazi where they're attacking the embassy compound. That's a good idea to get up there so you can see where they're coming from and to take better shots and not waste ammo from the rooftop for sure. I'd give that a, a pretty high rating in realism, about a seven, eight, just based on the, the type of weapons, the tactics, the chaos, the building construction, it's pretty real. I think this is an important scene because one of the biggest myths that TV and movies show about urban warfare is that it's just infantry or soldiers shooting their weapons. Major urban battles are tanks, artillery, engineers, infantry. They're full-scale battles in concrete. Now the damage that the tank does to the building, that is unlikely that the, just the whole face of the building is gonna fall off. It's gonna do a lot of damage and that's why you have a tank because a tank is mobile protected firepower. It has that giant gun that can punch through that problem, which is concrete and cover. But in this scene that they're all tracers, it's almost like a Star Wars ray gun. They won't all be like that. There's actually a myth that tanks are not helpful in urban warfare, that they're too vulnerable. But actually the history of urban warfare, if you go into a major urban fight and you don't have a tank, you're wrong. But the problem is that the tank can't go by itself and the infantry can't go by itself. And as we see in the scene, the infantry work to protect the tank and then the tank protect the infantry. But the tanks are vulnerable as you see here, the Germans shoot from below where the tank can shoot in the basement. Oh, so schießen! Come here. Die Soldaten, die noch da sind, möchten sich ergeben. The size needed to take a town or a village or a city all depends on what the enemy it is that you're, they're facing. And I think they really didn't know. For that street, I think that looked about right, absolutely, where you combine 
a tank section, always two tanks with an infantry platoon or something to, to clear a street like that before you discover where the enemy is. Outside of the lasers of the rounds, this is a very realistic scene of high intensity combat um, and the combined arms that you need, so I, I give it a nine. Oh, you do pause. The one thing that I, I can't help myself on this scene is that everyone walks up to the wall and just sticks their rifle over the top of the wall. That's absolutely what you don't do. You're just putting a flag up the same where you are. I don't have any problem with them moving to the rooftops. Um, this is a hasty attack. Two different buildings, that's great. It gives you converging fire, so fire them down from two different directions. They can cover more of, of the courtyard. The scene in this movie is, is based on the real battle of Mosul that happened in 2017, one of the biggest battles really since World War II, 100,000 security forces against a entrenched uh, ISIS enemy force that they had to be cleared out. That's actually pretty realistic. You open an attack like that with your biggest weapon. Your, we call it the most casually producing weapons. Duds do happen. The way you usually get around that is you have more than a single point of failure, more than one big weapon. Or like they do here, which is actually accurate, is once that duds, that's it. Your surprise is gone, attack. It's actually pretty complex what they're trying to do because they have moving forces with other elements shooting down that they have to know and watch very closely on when to turn their fire off as you advance. That's in some ways the way I would teach it as well. Um, that's as they're maneuvering in while another person is holding them down. Booby traps are, are very popular in urban warfare. Pictures on the wall, any and everything could be potentially booby traps. We see it right now in the Ukraine war when Ukraine takes back their own house, their territories from the Russians, but you have to be hyper aware of, of all those booby traps for sure. One is it's just awareness of every soldier not to move and displace things. And then we have bomb stiffing dogs that we'll bring in. I'm gonna actually give it around a, a five, six, just some of it's a little off. The underground is a huge component of the three-dimensional aspects of urban warfare. Many cities have cities under the cities, and, and in battles like this, which this movie is based on the Battle of Stalingrad, which was called the Rat War, because it, there was such a prevalent underground. Yes, those are possible urban sniper positions. The characters on both sides are loosely tied to real snipers that were prevalent in the Battle of Stalingrad who were known to like put themselves in the barrels and the ventilation shafts. The cat and the mouse between the two snipers, uh, that didn't happen. We do train soldiers to use the environment and, and there is some aspect of manipulating light and smoke. That's a real thing, right? Reflective lights in the mirror, but you don't know where the sniper is and unlikely that you're gonna have that ability to blind that, so no, don't, don't do that. I wanna give it a higher one because it is pointing out the underground warper aspect, but the realism of the actual, this happening, around a three, I guess. That's pretty, about as real as it gets. The IED or the improvised explosive device is the weapon of the last 20 plus years. The invisible enemy that you, you couldn't fight back against. The M250 Cal is still used today. It's a very effective, uh, large machine gun that has the size of bullet and penetration of concrete that you'd want. Uh, where other w weapons might not. The accuracy of what the bullets were doing to the building looked pretty pretty accurate. Some of them, you can tell, aren't penetrating. He didn't shoot that many bullets at that wall to create that level uh, of a, a sprawling and, and honeycombing of that wall. The tactics there are, are pretty sound where you have the machine gun covering an upper level while the infantry are maneuvering lower so there's control there and positioning themselves to enter that building where they know the enemy is. 
I can't say that, that that kicking of the door is not real. It's called the mule kick. I wish the movies would stop showing it because it's not effective, but I have found many soldiers trying it, uh, but it's not the most force you can put by kicking in that door. You want to face the door. <laughs> That's an unfortunate but very realistic uh, aspect of that scenario and that chaos of when the soldier enters the room but controlled and not just firing at everybody. But then you have a scared, frantic civilians even approaching you, making the soldier feel very unsafe. That's a very realistic and impactful, traumatic situation that is urban warfare. So if we were to take out the mule kick, I would give that scene a 10. My favorite urban warfare show or scene is actually Saving Private Ryan. The aspect of the sniper and basically using a casualty to draw more people out is, is my favorite movie scene of urban warfare. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, why not click on the video above?